Well, good morning. Try it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good to have you here on this uh, beautiful Lord's Day. We're going to go ahead and get started. A lot of folks missing today, holiday weekend. I heard something to do with our, our freedoms in America, and so we, we celebrate uh, that today, of course, and so very thankful to the Lord to be living in the greatest nation in the world, and so we praise the Lord for our privilege today. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and of course we want to remember the Bersheski family, the home going of Jerry, and uh, the Williams family, and Tim's passing, so remember everyone involved uh, during this time of loss. And uh, in your bulletin as well, uh, the information about the uh, two services that will be held this week, and uh, Tim's is on Tuesday morning here at the church, and that uh, starts at 11, as I said, but he has a uh, visitation time at uh, Lane Funeral Home, and that's from 3 to 7 on tomorrow uh, afternoon and evening, so keep that in mind. And Jerry's memorial homegoing service is at 6 o'clock on Friday evening. And people have been asking me about what they could do uh, to help out or what have you. So with both those uh, services, there will be gatherings after the services. If you'd like to uh, bring a dessert, uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. And if you um, want to bring that, if you're planning on coming to either of the services, you can bring that along with you or you can bring that uh, earlier uh, on the day of. And so uh, we appreciate that, as I said. So thank you for your support for uh, both of the families at this time. Also, uh, Debbie Carter, we mentioned to you, she passed away uh, last week unexpectedly as well. Uh, she was here the Sunday before, part of Angel's uh, discipleship class and uh, pray for the Carter family as well. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning and ask uh, God's blessing on our, our time together. Our Father and our God, we, we praise you this morning for your goodness and grace. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Lord, uh, we do lift up uh, Donna and family today. We pray, God, that your great comfort and uh, care would uh, surround them. Uh, Father, we, we just praise you for Jerry's life and what he has meant to all of us here throughout the years. As well as Tim and Michelle, we, we thank you for them. We thank you for Tim's life and service and relationship. And uh, we thank you that both uh, uh, Tim and Jerry celebrating in your presence. And God, we thank you that heaven is their home. And we thank you for the complete healing that you have brought uh, to their hearts and lives. Uh, we give you praise this morning, bless in this worship hour, and we'll uh, give you all the thanks. You're worthy, and Lord, we pray that you would encourage hearts and meet needs here this morning as only you can, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Join with me in uh, wishing uh, our good man, Danny, over here a happy birthday today. God bless you, Danny. <laughs> He, he even stood up for that. That was pretty cool. All right. Well, also in your bulletin this morning, we have a couple other uh, announcements. You, you always got to have a service with announcements or we just haven't, we haven't done our job if that's the case. Uh, an upcoming Awana meeting on July the 10th, and several of you have indicated that uh, that would be a good place, and we've been encouraging that, a good place for you to serve and be a part of things here at Forest View. And so if you can come out at uh, 6 o'clock um, on the 10th, that's a Wednesday evening. If you can't come out for the meeting, the informational meeting, uh, there is a sign-up sheet out in the, in the foyer as well. You can indicate that you do have an interest, and we will uh, make a contact there with you. Uh, also, on Tuesday evening, backing up just a little bit on Tuesday evening uh, at NFBC Frontier Bible Church. Uh, the uh, VBS meeting will be held uh, on the 2nd at uh, 6.30. So if you're going to be helping with Vacation Bible School over at Frontier Bible Church, uh, we encourage you to attend that meeting as well. And then uh, information about our, our second picnic of the season on the 14th. 
the information there for you and also um, the dates that people are using the facility around here for anybody who needs to know. Also be in prayer for Mary Ann Valar. She's going in for her uh, uh, second uh, surgery tomorrow and keep her in prayer. A little bit more extensive uh, findings than in the first surgery for her. So Mary Ann, we lift you and our hearts uh, to the Lord on your behalf and we pray God's, uh, God's healing in your life. And so those are the announcements. Uh, be mindful of what's on the overhead and what's on the bulletin as well. And we will not uh, belabor that a, a whole lot today, but we're going uh, to ask Guy Bodemer to come and lead us in a couple hymns of the faith this morning as we celebrate America today. Let's stand together as we lift our hearts and voices.
seated. That was some good singing this morning. Good for you. Feeling a little patriotic today? That's great. Well, hey, before we uh, receive the morning offering uh, today and worship the Lord with our giving, I'd like to also wish Don and Cheryl Bish a happy 56th wedding anniversary. God bless you. See, Don, it would have been all right if I forgot, but you didn't. I saw those pretty flowers. Good job, young man. That's good stuff. We love them both. They're a blessing to us, and uh, just keep having them, and we, uh, we treasure the relationship that we, we have in Christ together. Uh, at this time, we're going to call upon our ushers this morning to come to receive the morning offering, ask you to worship the Lord uh, with us this morning with your giving. We appreciate your faithful giving over the summer months, especially um, while we, we go here and there, vacations, enjoying the, the blessing of uh, good weather that the Lord gives us. And uh, we just thank you so much for sowing into God's work through Forest View. And at this time, we worship him with our giving this morning. <laughs> Father, we praise you for the privilege of serving you with our giving. Bless both the gift and giver, allowing us to use these for the furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that you spare not your own son, but freely gave that we might have eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord, in whose name we ask and pray. Amen. Um, I guess, too, more specifically for um, Tuesday's gathering for Tim's uh, service, and also for Jerry's on uh, Friday evening, um, this coming Friday at 6 o'clock. If you are not planning on going to the service or you can't, but you'd like to bring a dessert in, um, make sure that uh, you give me a call <laughs> or, or uh, you let somebody else know in the church and we'll, we'll arrange to be here uh, for you to drop that off. But uh, call, call the church ahead, and if you uh, want to leave a message, I'll, I'll call you back and make sure that that's uh, taken care of for you, if that possibly is a more convenient 
situation. So just before the message, Jim Salhaney and John Skoranek come to minister to you in song. stars you named and numbered were tempted in a desert you designed you faithfully obeyed the law you authored the king left his throne behind you washed the feet of those who called you master and fed the multitudes with truth and bread you shared the feast with harlots and with sinners and loved those who sought your death glorious lord you are glorious Shepherd and King, forever you'll be glorious. Without a word, you face the accusations, and faithfully you bore the bitter cross. received our condemnation and paid for the rebel's cost glorious Lord you are glorious shepherd and king forever you'll be glorious fashioned you were buried the word of life was silenced by the grave but doors of death could not contain your glory our God rolled the stone away glorious Lord you are glory Shepherd and King, forever you'll be glorious. Holy and here with us, let every heart declare that you are glorious. A glorious more 
More than watchmen wait for the morn. More than watchmen wait for the morning. From the depths, I cry to you, Lord. From Let your ears hear my voice cry for mercy. Let your ears hear my voice cry for mercy. Just as the sun falls down, your unfailing love will be found. Just as the sun does rise, your mercy will end. To my cries more than the watchmen wait I'll wait for you my soul waits waits for the Lord my soul more than watchmen wait for the morn. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Who could stand, stand in your presence? Without your love, your love and forgiveness. Oh, I'm lost without love and forgiveness. Just as the sun falls down, your unfailing love will be found. Just as the sun does rise, your mercy will answer my cries more than the watchman. Wait for you. Just as the sun falls down, your unfailing love will be found. Just as the sun does rise, your mercy will answer my cries more than the watchman. gentlemen oh, I had a question for you Jim John you didn't do any singing so you can answer this too so how, lo how long have you guys been playing together okay oh I thought you were older than that I'm sorry okay I thought you were gonna give me some big 30-year kind of thing you know yeah. okay anyway 10 12 years that's a long time Well, we are coming to the end of the book of Jude today. You don't believe me? We are. We're going to do it. And I got a lot of time. So anyway, if any of you were nervous last week about noon rolled around and hadn't preached yet, I saw it. I saw it on your faces. But God, God ordered our steps last week, and no apology for that. It was, it was a beautiful service. You know, and God does all things well. And I shared with you in the book of Jude, too, as it began in this series, and I can't really recollect when we started it, but uh, anyway, you think it's a short book, right? But it turned out to be one of the longer series. And in the beginning of it, he talked about his intention was to write about the common salvation that we all who are in Christ Jesus know and embrace and uh, have experienced. But the book of Jude didn't turn out that way at all because the Holy Spirit of God moved upon 
Jude's heart and he, he paid attention and basically uh, the Lord led him into sharing or writing or speaking about a message that was necessary. And that was to warn against false teaching and also to uh, warn against the immorality among leadership that was going on and being justified within the church and uh, violating scripture to, to um, meet their, their fleshly carnal ways, if you would. And so there was a lot of that warning in this book, throughout the book. And uh, the last two verses of the book of Jude, this letter, this message, isn't like an afterthought or isn't something that just uh, culminates the book for us. Uh, it is the best part of the book. It is really the best part for you and the best part for me. And so we're going to look at these last uh, two verses. And it says, now, after, and, and I like the word now, it's kind of a, a, a change of thought, if you would. You ever see those paragraph uh, symbols in your Bible? They, they weren't original to the text, but it's a change of thought. Now that I've talked to you about all the immorality, warned you uh, over and over and over again what to look out for um, within the church with false teaching and being led astray and being tossed about with every wind of doctrine. Now let me get down to the main point. Keep Keeping the main point or the main thing the main thing. And, and in the family of God and in the work of, of, of the Lord, what drives everything else and what motivates you for all that you do in your service to the Lord, it needs to be the main thing. The Apostle Paul said throughout Scripture, uh, this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind and pressing on toward that which is before us. And the Church of the Living God really needs to take that to heart. There's a lot of things that so easily distract us. And the Bible is clear on that too because the writers of Scripture through the, the move of the Holy Spirit knew that to be true. Things that so easily beset us. I don't know about you, but I can get, I can get sidetracked real easy. I don't have a good attention span. If you're talking to me, sometimes I look like a deer in the headlights. You know, it's like, you know, or you listening to me, right? You know, so, so it works both ways. The feeling's mutual. But uh, we love each other, and, you know, there's, there's that in Scripture because God loves us so much, he doesn't want us to be robbed of anything that uh, really has to do with living out this Christian life and living it well and to be on our game, if you would. And so these last two verses, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling or keep you from falling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time and now and forevermore. It kind of covers the whole duration of time, from eternity past to eternity future, and everything in between. Our God is God. He is the majestic, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise God. And uh, He is the one who's on the throne. And God will be the same as He is today, tomorrow. He is in our tomorrow. He already is there. And he already knows the future. He already knows what we have need of before we ask. And you know, you're, you're in pretty good shape when you acknowledge all these things about God. Uh, um, yeah, I was going to say Titus, but Jude is the one who is not telling us that we need to give these things to God. We are to acknowledge these things about God. And when we acknowledge these things about God in our communion with God, it postures us in such a way that we reverence him, and that we stand amazed in his presence. It's just not like a, 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 a checking off of a box of a spiritual duty or responsibility. You know, sometimes we, we just take God on a very casual basis, you know. Uh, we need to leave that for the world. But there's something special to be said about our Lord, because he's all of this and so much more. And when you experience him, and when you have communed with him, and uh, you've entered into this relationship with him, 
you can testify with experiential knowledge that uh, he is your faithful God. God ever been faithful to you? God ever show up for you? God ever meet your need according to his riches and glory? Have you experienced him? Do you know that he's all-powerful? Do you know that he is able? He's able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, beyond our imagination. He is able, and that is who our God is. And so this is where this uh, doxology is kind of building throughout the entire text of, of Jude. And, and uh, Jude would be remiss if he didn't end with that praise. You could probably state it in a lot of different ways, but it is very adequate. It is very, very good to get across the point he is, he is talking about. I talked about all these other things. I've warned you to the point where if you didn't get the warning, you haven't been paying attention. There is an enemy who is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Can he devour you? You take your eyes off of Christ and he'll have you for lunch. That's how important this is. But these few words in the 24th verse, so very important. We talked about all this other stuff, but I want to talk to you about how now you're going to, how now? How now, brown cow? How you're gonna how you're gonna manage how you're gonna manage all this stuff that I that I've shared with you? Because on your own you can't do it. On your own you're not able. But I want to bring you to the altar of the one who can execute all of this that we have shared with you because of his spirit's empowerment in your life. And he says, now to him. So he closes his letter with a declaration, a uh, doxology, if you would, of, of praise to God, because God is in the details, and God cares about you, and God has proven himself over and over and over again who he says that he is, he is true, and he is able, and he is the one who knows our needs. And it is not only a declaration in praise because he, he cares for us and he's been with us and he's walked with us and he has kept us, but it's also a declaration and a doxology of praise because he's concerned about your eternal destiny. Isn't that wonderful? Now he's going to keep us in this age, but he also has a plan for your eternity. Over the next several services this week, I'm sure you will hear if you're here and you have read and you know John, uh, the 14th chapter, we use it at a lot of homegoing services, but it's true. And it echoes Jude. It echoes Jude in such a way that, that, that we need to embrace it in, in a practical way. You know, to, to know God's word academically, you are thoroughly robbed of the experience of seeing application. And that's the best way to study God's Word. Application, application, application. I used to be of the mindset, you know, you, 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 you read through God's Word and you, you check off the box and you accomplish that. And, and I don't know about you, but I got to read things two and three, maybe now four times. What did that, what did that say? But what did it really say? So when you parse out God's word and you, you study it and you preach it uh, in an expository kind of way, yeah, it can get a little bit lengthy. I get, re I get reminded of that quite often in, in jest, you know. But uh, there's, there's gold in these, in these words. There's a lot here. You can camp out on this, those, just those two words. And I promise this morning I'm not going to camp out just on those two words. I'm going to complete two verses here this morning, John. And John can get away with it because he's known me for a long time. And I won't use his last name. But what a, what a great way to wrap up this text. Now to him. I didn't say now to Jude. He didn't say to himself. He didn't say, well, now to the Apostle Paul or 
now to this or, or that or the other. Now to him, very specifically. It's a really cool phrase. And I believe that needs to be in our every prayer. Now to him who is able. That's why I pray to him. Now to him in every circumstance. Now to him praise is his because of every miracle. Now to him who is able because of situations we feel that we could never make it through. Now to him. Now because of experience. Now because of what I've been uh, experiencing with him in the past and, and throughout my daily life. This now too. Man that is born of woman is of a few days and, and full of trouble. Now to him. Based on what? Paul said, I know that I know that I know. How do you know? Because you have seen the hand and heart of God in your life. Did you ever think you'd make it through the things that are rolling through the reels of your mind right now? Absolutely not. And the doxology of this text is because God loves you and that God cares. You're not exempt from the sufferings of this life, but the sufferings of this life in no way compared to the glory that awaits you. Isn't it wonderful to know that he cares? Donna, he cares. My words are so inadequate. But your experience with God has been breathtaking. His sustaining grace, his mercies. C.C. Wyman sings a song. I wish I could describe him. I wish I could tell you about my king. You know? By the way, she stole that because it was on a video by a pastor from about a generation ago. <laughs> but it made a good song. Anyways, verse number 24 goes on. I better be careful. Verse 24 goes on. It says, not only unto him, not only the fact that he's able, but he's able to do something very specifically. And what does the text say? He's able to keep you. He's able to keep you in his hand and love you with his eternal heart and his purposes. He keeps you when we would almost disqualify ourselves if it were possible, and that was the Apostle Paul's greatest fear, that he would be disqualified from preaching the gospel because of not keeping himself in the love of God. You see, God loves us unconditionally, but there's a place of responsibility where we need to keep ourselves in a place where we're benefiting from God's love. That's what, he, that's what he means there. Walking in harmony with the Spirit. Be ye holy as I am holy. Because you've experienced the great love of God, purify yourself as he is pure. That ought to be the response, and it, and it gets into that in, in this text. But he is... He is able now to him who is able to keep you, which basically means he's able to keep you because there's something you need to know. You are not able to keep yourself. Don't miss it. The statement is made to qualify what isn't there, but it's a foregone conclusion. I'm keeping you because you can't. You get it? That is a great statement in Scripture. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. He is the keeper of my soul. I can't keep my soul. Heaven would be a very lonely place because not one of us would be there if we had this task. Not one. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain before the foundations of the world. My niece told me to keep her awake this morning. They're here from Tennessee. Is that how you say it down there? Tennessee. Good move. Don't you all move with them, but good move. I'm trying to stay awake too, so I'm trying to 
do this. But he's able to keep you because you're not able to keep yourself. So here's the question. Jude's warning throughout all of these 23 verses leading up to verse 24 and 25 is kind of daunting if you think about it. All the false teaching and all the fall into immorality and justifying, even using the word of God to justify fleshly satisfaction. Who is safe? Who is safe from temptation? Who is safe from the fall? Who is safe from, 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 uh, from this, this, this kind of sin? Who is, who is going to be spared? It's kind of a legitimate question. So many warnings. It's like, we're not above, we're not above sin. Well, I share this with you this morning, what's not in the text, but uh, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. That's where the believer needs to walk, because if you don't, you will. We like our sin. And that's a problem. But the answer is found in the Word of God. In the book of Jude, two verses of who's going to be spared and how, how it's done and how, how you understand it all. Verse number one of, of Jude, it, it says... To those who are the called, beloved. And that's one of the great identities of, of, of God's people. In 1 John, it was used multiple times in the book of Jude and throughout Scripture. You are called the beloved of God. Now we are something. What are you? If you've been to the cross, if you've experienced forgiveness of sin... If you've, you've been to the altar of God and you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the beloved of God. Now you are the children of God. But anyway, verse number one, who is spared? Who is, who is going to be able not to stumble with all of this swirling around us, leadership involved in it, and all this kind of stuff that has invaded the church? To those who are called the beloved of God, the Father, they are kept for Jesus Christ. Verse 21, and then it goes on, because he's the keeper of your soul, you need to do something. What's it say? It says, you need to keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously. That is your motivation to live godly in Christ Jesus. Hey, I don't know if you know or not, but Jesus is coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, but I'm telling you, Jesus is coming soon. And you might be going to see Jesus before he comes. And some of our beloved recently have experienced that, breathing their last here on this side. The next breath is celestial in the presence of God. That will be glory. Glory for me. Anxiously waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. That's why this doxology is here. That's why Jude concludes with it. Because not only did he care for you in this life, in this journey, providing in every way imaginable and seeing us through because he's a faithful God, he cares about your eternity. He cares about where you're going to spend that. And without believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not spending it in heaven, plain and simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made. What's in the heart proceeds out of the mouth of man. And we got to look at that, don't we? We need to examine our hearts, just like we did last week in the time of the Lord's Supper, communion. What's coming out of the well? It ought not to be fresh water and salt water. It's an impossibility. The things of the redeemed need to be works of righteousness because of his mercy that saves us and motivates us and helps us to live anxiously awaiting the Savior's return. You have enough motivation for a lifetime because Jesus has redeemed you 
Don't ever take lightly the salvation of, of your heart and, and your life. It's a miracle of God. He's risen. He's raised us from the dead. That's the miracle. I know we get into the routine of life each and every day, and we kind of just go through the motions, you know, kind of thing. But we need to stop. We need to pause. Jesus speaks with a still, small voice, not with that loud voice that the world is speaking with. He speaks to your spirit, speaks to your heart. Where does my joy come from? My joy comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. That's where the joy of the believer comes from, not from the world. This world will disappoint you. Religion will disappoint you. I'll disappoint you. I'll disappoint you all week long. Because I'm just like you. But we're here together. And when you put it together, it is the body of Christ. And we make each other complete. And it's a miracle of God. Don't ever take this thing called church lightly. That it's something you do on Sundays. It's who you are. You are the church of the living God. The church of God. We got a good name. If we understand it, it's just not a name out on the placard out there. We are the church of God. It's his. Now, I know a lot of other groups use it, and it's a confusing kind of thing. But it is a distinctive just the same. We're his church. We're not just any church. We're the true church. We need to live like God's people. We need to be his witnesses in this age, anxiously awaiting his return. So ultimately, ultimately, it is the Father who keeps us, not only for our eternal destiny, but also, you notice the text, what does he keep us from? He keeps us from stumbling. He keeps us from falling. He keeps us from sin if we'll only trust him. Not producing works of unrighteousness that the human man has done naturally throughout all of his life, but when redeemed and saved and brought to the family of God, those same instruments are used as instruments to produce works of righteousness. And so that's what God is doing in our lives. The, the, the book of Philippians uh, excuse me, verses, uh, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Doesn't mean work for your salvation, but because you are saved, because you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, you need to do something with it. You need to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We don't go to the hillside after coming to know the Lord and sing Kumbaya and share all the warm and fuzzies. We go to war. We do the battle of the cross. We put on the armor of God. We walk in the precepts of the Lord. We, we, we uphold his statutes. And we live out Christ Jesus. That's what we're doing. That's what we're called to do. Standing firm in one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith uh, of the gospel. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. He keeps us from stumbling. He's the keeper of our soul. So while we are, are kept and while we're keeping ourselves in the love of God, he's keeping us spiritually. He's keeping us safe. Why? Just as the text says, just that other text say, over and over again, because you are the children of God. He's made an investment in you. You are the beloved of God. That's why he's the keeper of your soul, because you're his. You've been bought with a price. You're not your own. You're a treasure of God. You're important to God. Look at the cross to see how much you're worth. 
You ever have a problem with self-worth? Look at your spiritual worth. It's a whole lot better view than looking at other things. Where do you measure your worth? I hope you measure it based upon the cross, not based upon what the world says about you, not what the world the world is the world is full of lies. The enemy is the great deceiver, and he does a good job, and he works overtime against the children of God. You're worth the Son of the Living God, and why He keeps your soul, and why He's invested in you, because you're joint heirs with Him. You're co-laborers with him. You're part of the program with God. That's why we become the arms, and, the arms and feet of Jesus. And then, not only now unto him, not only the fact that he's able to, to, to keep you and you're to keep yourself in the love of God, but before his presence, in the presence of God, and I told you many, many weeks ago, this is when it gets good. This is when it gets really good. Before the presence of his glory. Can you imagine that fact? Standing in the presence of God's glory. That's an awesome thought. What is the glory of God anyway? Well, if you do a study on that word, the glory of God is no other than the only begotten of the Father. His Son is His glory. The Son of God is the glory of the Father. And so, being presented before Him, we do not need to shamefully enter into the presence of God, but there, with joy unspeakable and full of glory, Christ does something. He presents us blameless, before his throne. And if you don't say amen to that, there's a problem in this church. So, anyway, good, we don't have a problem. I thought we had a problem. Following me? When you think you have a problem, read this text. You'll see how major your problem really is. The holy God of glory is going to present you blameless before his throne and that is going to produce for you something that you could not even begin to ex express or utter Paul gets in Paul gets into that in uh, I think in the book of Timothy he talk he talks about these are words that ought not to even be humanly uttered because we don't have the vocabulary for it. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That means it's something that is the vocabulary of heaven. We can't put it to words. We can't do justice to it. Don't touch the glory of God with trying to explain something that he has done that we can't even fathom but yet experience. So if you got a problem, if you think your day isn't going too well, bow your knee before what was already accomplished and anxiously await his mercy unto eternal life. It's going to get a whole lot better than it is today. There's coming a better day. I kind of parallel it to what you see recorded in the Gospels, the Gospel according to Matthew. It's the same word usage with uh, this phrase, uh, exceedingly, exceeding joy. It was the same expression when the wise men were seeking the Christ child. And lo and behold, they saw a star. Not just any star. That was a star among all the stars that were even named by our Heavenly Father, which you cannot number, but this was a special star. Some people read into it that it was more than a star. But that's a discussion theologically for another day. 
But the expression on that day was when they saw the star, they were filled with exceeding joy. Can you imagine? You can't. But standing in the presence of holy God, being presented by his son who died for you, for there is no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved, clothed in his righteousness, forgiven and given a right standing with God, and he presents you to the Father. And you're blameless as you're clothed in his righteousness. You talk about exceeding joy that Paul warned about even trying to express in human terms, and he said it ought not to even be uttered humanly. Because we can't even do justice to it, as, as we were saying. So in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, and here again, beloved, now we are the children of God. That's what you are now. Because of salvation, that's what you are now because of experiencing what the cross was meant for. And coming to the cross and knowing his, his, his love and his forgiveness and, and it is salvation by grace through faith and that not of yourself. Beloved, now we are the children of God and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. Aren't you glad that you're going to be a whole lot better than what you are now? Come on. Amen? Do you grow a little bit weary on this side? Your body talks back to you with groans and noises that you don't even know what they are. It's called the aging process. But guess what? You're going to have a new body. You're going to have a new mind. Now you are the children of God, but it gets a whole lot better because it has not yet appeared what we shall be, but we know how do you know? Because based on God's word, we know that when he, the Christ, appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. Verse 3, everyone who has this hope, you're the children of God, you're going to be like him because you're going to see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope, Fixed on him, because there's salvation and no other, what does he do? He keeps himself in the love of God. This is what he does. This is what she does. These who have this hope, not a hope so, but a confidence of his return and presenting us blameless before the throne. This is what we do on this side of eternity. We purify ourselves just as he is pure. That's the task that is before us. And we do not do that on our own. We don't do that in human power. We do that because of the motivation of the one who calls us his beloved and the one who is going to present us faultless and the one who is working in us both to will and to do of, of his bidding, if you would. And then verse number 25. That was a long verse. See, I'm even, I'm even struggling to get through this because <clears throat> it's so good. To the only wise God, or to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ the Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. So, he alone, who alone is wise and who alone is, is God of very gods. I shall have no other gods before me. I am God, and I am God alone, what Jude says about God himself. And not only is he God, but he's also personally your Savior. All glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore. It's a reminder. We kind of touched on this already. It's a reminder of God's wisdom. It's a reminder of his glory and his power 
as we said, Jude is not telling you to, to, to give these things to God. We're acknowledging the truth about who God already is and all of his attributes. Your God alone is all-powerful. Now you are the children of that God. He is all-wise. That's your God. So that's who you go to ask for wisdom. Anyone lack, uh, uh, lack wisdom? Let him ask of his God, because he's the beloved of God, and he is the one who's going to be like him, because we're going to see him as he is. And so all wisdom, all glory, all dominion, everything that can be attributed to God, and I know the, the whole thing, and, and Rich, Rich did a, a water stream, did a real nice presentation and message in our, la, in our last men's breakfast of the season in June about idolatry. Right, Rich? Was I paying attention? That's what it was? And you made a great distinction. You clarified for us. All of those things that we allowed to be raised up in our estimation about God clearly can't even begin to shadow or cast a shadow on these attributes that are God's alone. They will disappoint you. They're for a season. They will last for... Uh, the pleasure of sin is only for a season. The things that uh, fulfill us are only for a season. And we look forward to the next thing and the next thing and, and, and yet the next thing. And it says in this passage of Scripture that all of this that is attributed to God is authority, dominion, majesty, and glory before all time began. This is who God was and this is who God is and now and forevermore. That means God is going to be the same God tomorrow as he is today and he was before the creation of heaven and earth. These things are already describing who he is and what we can have and experience in him. Do you experience God to this threshold, to this level? Do you know your God at, at, at this standard? of how he intends to work and function in your life. For after all, there's going to be times in your life when you are going to need all of who God is. Right, Donna? All of who God is. And I don't mean to be singling Donna out in any way, but I saw some pretty special things. What strengthens my ministry is all about the things that you ask me about. Are you okay? I got, I got tons of phone calls and texts this week about many of you praying for me. Let me share with you. When you can see Jesus in the storm, and when you can see his hand at work, yeah, there's sadness. Yes, there is all of that that comes with it. We're human. But, oh, God's star shines brightly. And behold, they saw the star shining in the east. I think it was the east. And they stood amazed with exceeding joy. And when you see the Christ in the midst of the trial, and when you see Christ and his power strengthening you, encouraging you when you don't have it, and you see it coming from the miracle of the resurrection, there is something that causes you to be anxious about his mercy, and it only directs you to the eternal life that he promises. Now, holy is our God. Good and mighty is our Lord. So a reminder about what already is and needs to be continued, continually said about who our God is because all honor and praise and worship is to him and to him alone. As we said, both now and forevermore. Unto all the ages, faithful and unchanging is our God. You can rely on him. You can take him at his word. You do not need to have another ace in the hole. He is your source. And he shall supply all your needs for all your needs according to his riches and glory 
You need to believe him and try him and prove him and see if he is not who he says that he is. Because he is that and all that and all so much more than that. And I believe in my heart of hearts, Christians need to be confessing these things to the world when this world is in despair and this world is having struggles and this world is, is uh, like the United States. And by the way, folks, the United States of America, as we celebrate America today, she's in trouble because we've lost our way. And I think it's right on the... I think it's right on the, uh, the, the, the cover of your bulletin this morning. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I knew, I knew that would fit in there somewhere. But isn't it true? This is good stuff. And you need to read it, and you need to study it, and you need to internalize it, and you need to apply it, and you need to see it work when everything else seems to be going in the wrong direction and going, going on you. It is totally God who is the keeper of our soul. It is totally God who keeps us from stumbling. He is totally God who presents us blameless before his throne. And only God can do that because you cannot do that for yourself. And if you've tried, and yes, you have, how is that working for you? Not very well. And God wants you to experience trying it on your own, by the way. He allowed the children of Israel to wander in the wilderness for 40 years on a trip that should have took 40 days. Why? Why? Because he wanted them to come to say that you are God and you are Lord and there is no other. He wanted them to come to the conclusion and he didn't want to bring them to a conclusion. He wanted them to discover it because I've been there all the time with you, never leaving you or forsaking you. Both now and forevermore. So that means our victory and our triumph is in God forever and forever, and no matter how great the threat is against his church, God is always greater. And if the church is doing what God has called us to do, there will be threats against the church. It will not be a country club experience. It will not be just getting all nice and cozy and having your best sleep on Sundays, and you can thank me for that very much, because I've been told that many times. It's not about that. If the church is not equipping you to do the work of the ministry, to be able to go out into this world and having done all the stand, then we're not doing our job. And you are not doing your job if you're not applying it. Please don't tell me that this was a good sermon today. Show God that it was, because it's his word, not mine. I just have the privilege of delivering it. And oh, am I privileged. And the more I do this and the more years go by, I stand amazed in his presence for the privilege of a young boy I knew who I was that I would skip school on days of oral reports and break out in hives. And, 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 I, couldn't, and, and I still don't like public speaking. But how can, we not, how can we not speak of the truth about him in regard to what he already is and what we already have experienced and we know him to be all of this and so much more? Tell the world, folks. Tell the world that he's mighty to save. Tuesday morning, if you're here for Tim's homegoing service, you're going to hear something. I'm going to share with you about two things in regard to Tim. His two greatest spiritual desires and one of them was to see people born into the family of God. How do I know that? Because I witnessed that. I witnessed that hospital bed being used as an altar. I saw Mike come back to us as he had gone astray and 
was the very roommate in, in Tim's hospital room coming to get his heart right because Tim would pray for those who were in the rooms with him and, and for the hospital workers and, 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 and for his boys and, and, and others in his family. You see, the, the more and more you see the, the lights of glory and the lights of heaven, the more urgency, the more urgency this whole thing has. I share with you and I submit to you, you do not know. You do not know, nor can you say with assurance that this day isn't my last. And if believers would live that way, the things of God would no longer be something to discuss. It would be just something, how quickly can we move to do it? I got some pretty neat things to talk about Jerry, too, on Friday evening. These are my... These are my brothers. These were my brothers. 36 years of doing life with these guys, and I'm a better man for it. What a privilege of mine. So if you're praying for me this week, I want to tell you, I'm all right. This is good, because God is great. John, it's 12 o'clock. No, I'm not. Finally, you said it. Okay. <clears throat> So the conclusion, Jude is a book full of warning, is it not? Yeah, we've heard that, haven't we? But it closes with this supreme confidence in, in the one true God who is able. Dangerous times we're living in, and that's the truth. But you know, it leads the believer to just trust in this mighty God more and more. Without him I can do nothing, but with God all things are possible. Father, we love you because you first loved us. We're overwhelmed by your majesty we're overwhelmed by your power, your grace, and your mercy. We're overwhelmed in your presence, Lord, because of all that we have experienced in you and yet to experience. Now we are the children of God, and it has not yet appeared what we shall be. But, O oh Lord, my salvation one day and all who have believed, our salvation is going to be made complete because we're going to be like you, because we shall see you just as you are. We love you and praise you. We thank you for America. We thank you, Lord, as we call upon you to once again bless America. We live under your blessing. We do not deserve your blessing. But God, I pray you continue to use your church that we might be a blessing in these last days. We give all the glory and all the praise and all the thanks for worthy is the Lamb, full of mercy and full of grace, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Guy is going to lead us, and God bless America.
you're dismissed. Have a wonderful week.